God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Today the message is when you are over your head. When you are over your head. Or when over your head. Now what does this, this is a, 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 a figure of speech. And it's, it means that whenever you are facing a situation that you cannot do anything about. If you are in a situation that you cannot do anything about, you are over your head. Amen. Hallelujah. When you are in a situation that you cannot do anything about, then you are over your head. So today the message is, when over your head. When over your head. Amen. There was one day when I was a, a young boy. One day we went swimming in the, in, in, the, in the clubhouse. And I fell into the pool. But I fell in the deep, deeper end. Not the deep end. This pool had a four feet end and ended at the, at the 17 feet end. So it kind of slanted. And I fell in around the 10 feet part of the pool. And when I tried to come up, just when I'd gone down, I realized I couldn't do anything. I came up and I went back down. And I, went, I, I couldn't stay down. And I tried to come back up. And just when I was coming up the, the, the second or third time, I'm not sure how many times I'd done that, but just when I was coming up one more time, the lifeguard had seen me fall in and had seen me struggling to come up. And the lifeguard jumped into the pool. And just when I was coming up, his head hit my head as he was also coming in. Boom, hitting me back down. So I didn't get that last breath. I was way over my head in this situation. But the lifeguard was able to pull me out of the pool and uh, give me some life support and I was able to, to breathe again. I was over my head in that situation. But it may be today you are over your head in some kind of situation. Maybe you feel like things around you are, are surrounding you are drowning in your crisis. Maybe you feel like you are drowning in the situation you are facing. Maybe you feel like everything is going crazy around you. Oh, brethren, today I am here to tell you that don't worry. God is in control and God will bring you out of that crisis. Whenever you are over your head, there is a God that is able to bring you un under his control. Amen. So don't worry if you feel like you are over your head right now. Don't worry if you feel like things are not going the way you want it to go. Don't worry if things are crazy in your life right now. You are over your head. Yes. But it's under God's control. Amen. You are over your head. But God is in, still in control. So what is it that is over your head that you cannot do anything about? Is it your sickness? Is it your finances? Is it your papers? Is it your job? Is it your relationship? If there was something you could do about it, you would have done it to change the circumstance. So that means that there is nothing you can do to change that situation. There is nothing you can do to turn things around. There is nothing you can do to make things a lot better than it is. So right now you feel like you are over your head. But brethren, whenever you are over your head, I want you to know that there is a God who is able oh, to change everything. Right now, this world we are living in is full of uncertainties. This world is full of instability. This world is full of insecurity. I mean, look around us. Floods. No snowstorms. Hurricanes. Tornadoes. 
I mean, Florida, uh, California has had drought for many years, and all of a sudden they are uh, bombarded with an atmospheric river that is throwing rain and snow in California. And it's affecting a lot of other places around the uh, U.S. Look at what's happening in Ukraine. Many people are facing situations that's way over their heads. There is nothing they can do about it right now. What can you and I do to change the circumstance that they are facing right now? What can you and I do to change the situation we may be in right now? You know, political turmoil around the world. Almost every country. Look at what's happening in France right now. They are, they are having protests and burning things because the government wants to add two more years to their retirement age. Their retirement age is 62. Government says if we, if we stay there, you know, it's not good. We, we want to increase it to 64. Two more years and the people are out in the streets and it's creating a whole lot of turmoil. Almost every country is facing some kind of political turmoil. And what can we do about it? What can you and I do to change the circumstance? Amen. But brethren, I'm here to tell you that there is something you can do about it. Yes, it is above your pay grade. You cannot solve the problem. You cannot change the situation. You cannot heal yourself. You cannot give yourself a financial breakthrough. You cannot change that relationship. You cannot fix it to yourself. But there's still something you can do. Amen. And what you can do is to call on your God, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who created it all, the one who is able to do all things, the altar and the finisher of all things. That's what you can do to call on your God. So I present to you the two stories we read of people uh, who faced a situation that was way over their heads and what they did and how God came through for them. The first story is the life is the birth of Moses. Moses was born at a very unsettling time. Moses was born when the king had passed a law that every young boy should die. In fact, the king gave an instruction to all the midwives. When, you give, uh, when somebody comes to give birth and it's a girl, that's okay, let them live. But if it's a boy, have them kill. And that was the time when Moses was born. The mother gave birth to Moses and tried to hide Moses. And the Bible says she hid him until he could hide him no more. And then the, the, the baby is always crying and blah, blah, blah. And so the mother knows that this baby will, will get us in trouble. So mother says that, no, this is over my head. There is nothing I can do. I leave him in the hands of God. So Moses' mother builds the basket, cover it in, and put the baby in it, and put it in the river Nile, and said to his daughter, Watch, see where it goes. And daughter Miriam followed the basket as the basket began to flow. See, Mary, uh, mother realized that there was nothing she could do for her son. But if he leaves him in the hands of God, God will take care of the son. And God took care of the son. And the basket flowed all the way to where the Pharaoh's daughter was taking a swim. And Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket and pulled it out of the river and looked at it and saw the baby and knew that this was a slave child, but knew that it was a boy. And this boy, if it belonged to a slave child, would die. So mother, a new mother says, I want this baby. I am keeping this baby. And that's what saved Moses' life. See, when we leave it in the hands of God, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way in the circumstances we are facing. And God will change the situation that you and I are in. You and I couldn't. Look, there was nothing Moses, Moses' mother could not have saved Moses' life. She could have tried and kept him and kept him and kept him. But one day they would have found him. And that if the moment they found him, they would have gone to kill the boy. But because he left it in the hands of God, God made sure that it was the princess who found him. 
And so nobody was going to be able to kill the princess's daughter. Then Miriam shows up and says, Oh, I know somebody who can take care of this child for you. Princess says, Go and bring that person. Then he goes to bring Moses' own mother. And the princess gives it to the own mother and says, Go and take care of this baby until this baby is weaned. And then you bring him back to me. <laughs> oh, ready? when you leave it in the hands of God, God will take care of it for you. See what God did? God, now the baby is with Moses' own mother. And now she's raising her own child, but this time she's not scared. This time the life of the baby is not at risk. This time. This time, this time, this time, things have changed. Brethren, if you leave your situation in the hands of God, God will change the circumstance. God will make things different. God will make things right. God will change what is going on in your life. I don't know what is going on in your life. I don't know what is over your head that you can't do anything about. But I'm here to tell you that if you leave it in the hands of God, God will turn things around in your life. Amen. The second story is the story of the Shunammite woman. Here is a woman who had no child. But she did some good to the prophet and the prophet prophesied that, hey, same time next year when I come, you will have a baby. Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 4 that, oh, when the year came, the woman had gotten pregnant and given birth and had the child. That the prophet had prophesied into her life. But soon the child got sick one day. And one day the child got so sick. Mother was holding on to the ch child. And the child died in mother's hands. When your child dies. What can you do about it? It is over your head. Oh, death is something you can't do anything about. Death is some problem you can't solve. Oh, it is appointed unto man once to die. Each and every one of us will die. And when one of us dies, there is nothing you and I can do about it. It is now in the hands of God. So the Shunammite woman put the baby in Elijah's bed and went to the husband and says, Give me a donkey, give me somebody to take me. I'm going to go see the prophet. So she, the husband says, oh, but what's so special? Husband didn't know what was going on. Says, that's okay. I'll be right back. I just need to go talk to him. So he went. The prophet saw the lady coming. And he says, Gehazi, my servant, run. Run, go and find out what is going on in this woman's life. Why she's coming to see me at this time. It's not time for her to come. But the woman is coming. So don't worry. Go, 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 go and see. So the prophet sends Gehazi. Gehazi goes to ask the woman. The woman says, that's okay. I want to see the prophet. So he goes and sees the prophet Elisha. And Elisha says to him, she says to Elisha, Elisha, see, I was living my somewhere humbly. I didn't have a child, and I was, I was fine with that. You came and prophesied a child into my life. I didn't ask for a child. Now you've given me this child, and this child is gone. Now that I've gotten used to having a child, now I have no child no more. Elisha sends Gehazi, says, Gehazi, take my staff. Go, 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 go and put my staff on it. The woman says, oh, no, no, no. I, I don't know about Gehazi. I don't know about Gehazi, but you, if you don't go, I am not leaving either. So Elisha, the Bible says, Elisha got up and followed the woman and they went. She got to the house and she put everybody out. And then he prayed. See, Elijah realized that this is over his head. There was nothing he could do about it. And oh, he needed God to step in. Oh, brethren, you too, whenever you are facing a situation, whenever you're facing a crisis, I want you to realize that when you are over your head, you have a God you can call on. You have a God you can pray to. You have a God you can ask. You have a God you can knock. You have a God you can seek from. Oh, call on him in the time of your trouble. And the Lord our God says he will come to our aid. So Elijah prayed. And then he lies on the body of the boy. 
The Bible says, eye to eye, mouth to mouth, body to body. He did it the first time, came back up. The child didn't move. He prayed again. And then he went and he did it the second time. And then the body started getting warm. And then the boy, the boy sneezed seven times. And Elisha calls the mother and says, here's your son. The mother is elated. He bows down and holds Elisha's legs. Elisha, uh -uh, it's not me. I didn't do anything. It's the Lord. Amen. See, we serve a God. If God can create the heavens and the earth, then there is nothing too hard for your God. It says to man it is impossible, but to God nothing is impossible. Oh, brethren, to man it is impossible, but to God nothing is impossible. Oh, to you it is impossible, but to God nothing is impossible. That's the God you and I are serving. And that's the God I'm promoting to you today, that whenever you find yourself over your head, in a situation, in a crisis, in a problem, with anything going on in your life, know that you serve the Almighty God. Know that you serve a God that is able to do everything. That's the God you and I are serving. That's the God who is able to do everything in our life. That's the God you and I are able to do exploits in our life. Oh, brethren, no. That your God is able. No, that your God is able. No, that your God is able. My God is able. He is able. I know He is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Oh, for He healed the brokenhearted. He set the captives free. He healed the sick, raised the dead, and walked upon the sea. My God is able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my God is able to carry me through. So, brother, what are you going through right now? What are you going through today? What is over your head? What can't you do anything about? Your God is able to carry you through. Amen. Your God is able to carry you through. Your God is able to carry you through. Your God is able to carry you through. Brethren, let's open our Bibles to James chapter 1. Amen. James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Remember that there are so many trials and tribulations that will come your way. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 2. And it says, my brethren, count it all joy when you find yourselves in diverse trials and temptations. It's difficult to, to be happy when you are facing a crisis or trial or a tribulation or crisis. But the Bible is saying, count it all joy. Because know this, that the trying of your faith works Patience or perseverance. But let patience or perseverance have a perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. You will face many trials and tribulations because it is part of life. Whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not. Trials and tribulations are part of life. There is nobody's life that is a straight line of happiness and joy and, and, and everything is all rosy and no crisis, no problem. No, nobody in life has experienced that. Each and every one of us goes through high mountains and low valleys. It goes like this. Some days we are happy. Some days we are sad. Some days everything is okay. Some days we have problems. Some days things are going right. Some days things are going wrong. So that's why it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says there is a time and a season for everything. There is a time and a season for everything that you and I are facing. 
No matter what is going on in our life, it is just for a season. And this too shall pass. But whilst you are going through that bad moment, you have to know that you serve a God who can bring you out of those bad times, bring you out of those crises, bring you out of that sickness, bring you out of those uh, bad situations and give you a good time. Turn things around. Oh, look at, listen to all the testimonies that came. Our sister who has been diagnosed that there is her kidneys are now working 3%. Kidneys that should run at 100% is running at less than 5%. 3%. How, how, what work is 3% to a human body? And so the doctor said you need dialysis in order to stay alive. Serve a living God. God has come through for her. And now her, her, her kidneys are working great. The doctors are even surprised by what has changed, brethren. So you see, when we prayed, God heard us. When we were asking God to come through for our sister, God heard us and has come through for our sister. See, when I had that flat tire in the middle of nowhere, whilst it is snowy, that I knew I couldn't change it. I couldn't stop to change my flat tire. I called on my God. God helped me out in this situation and God fixed my tire so that by the time I even got to the gas station, I didn't even need to put air in there. I didn't need to fix the tire. That was flat. Zero. My temp, the, the air pressure said zero. It means there is no air in it. It means it is flat. And now it is full. And everything is working. That's the God you and I are serving. Many of us are always looking for the big miracles to happen before we know that we serve a living God. Many of us are always expecting big things. But God is the God of big things and he's also the God of little things. But the important thing is when you are over your head, there was nothing I could do about my tire. There was nothing our sister could do about her kidneys. But we serve a God. God, and God can do something about it. And God did something about it. Oh, brethren, this day, I want you to understand the God you are serving, the God you came to listen to. What are you going through? What crisis are you facing? What problem is going on in your life that you need God to step in and turn things around in it? I don't know what it is. If God can do it for me, he can do it for you too. I am no special than you are. So maybe yours is not a tire. Maybe yours is a job. Maybe yours is your papers. Maybe yours is your marriage. Maybe yours is your health. Whatever it is, we serve a God who can take care of everything. We serve a God who is able, who is a miracle-working God. Let me tell you a story I read once. One day, a woman went shopping, and when she came home, her husband asked her, says, where did you go? He says, I went to go buy some groceries. He says, oh, no. You who've gone shopping, you've spent all the money that we had. And the woman says, I didn't spend all the money we had. I spent it on things we need. And the husband said, so what happened to the nest egg? <laughs> Meaning the secret stash that uh, they, they had hidden that uh, they were keeping for a rainy day. The woman had taken it and gone shopping. And the woman says to the husband, says, <laughs> says, the hen got tired of sitting on the nest egg. And so the hen got up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to get tired of sitting and, and, and trying to worry and stress yourself about whatever it is. Get up. Leave it in God's hands and let God take control. Get up. Stop worrying. Stop stressing. Stop giving yourself high blood pressure. Stop giving yourself hypertension. Stop raising your anxiety levels. Stop raising your blood pressure. Let God take control over it. Let God take control over it. So there is two things we need to learn from James chapter 1 for, uh, verse 2 to 4. The first one is when trials and temptations come, they are here to test our faith. God is allowing some of these things to happen in our life to test our faith. Whether we trust him enough, whether we have faith in him enough, whether we believe in him enough. And the second lesson there is that it helps the faith that is being tested 
test our perseverance, our ability to wait on the Lord, our ability to persevere, our ability to, to, to be patient. Our ability to be patient and wait on God's time. Brethren, be patient sometimes. Don't be in a hurry. Many of us, we are in a hurry. We want everything so quickly. We want it. But if you get it so quickly, what, what does tomorrow look like? So let God who knows tomorrow. You and I don't know tomorrow. Let God who knows tomorrow take care of it. Because he knows when will be a good time for you to receive what it is you're asking for. So, Brendan, let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. And he reads, says, God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in times of trouble. Take note of the word, very present, very present, very present. God is very present in your time of trouble. And so he, in that middle, in the middle of it, God is present. And he is your present help. He is your very present help in the time of your trouble. Psalm 46 verse 1. Verse 2 says, therefore, we will not be afraid. We will not fear. Though the earth be removed. Brethren, maybe your earth is being removed right now. Although the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, maybe your mountains are being carried into the sea. Although the waters therefore roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Though you are sick, though you are facing crisis, though you are facing problems, though things are not going right in your life, though you have lost a loved one, though, although, 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 God is your very present help in the middle of it. Amen. So verse 10 says, So be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. And I'll be exalted in the earth. God is making you a promise today. He says, be still and know that he is God. Brethren, God says, be still and know that I am God. Be still, be still, be still, be still, be still, be still. That's God's promise for you. He is your very present help in your time of trouble. In the middle of your crisis. But he still says, be still and know that I am God. Brethren, do you know that God is God? Do you know that God is with us? Do you know that God is your ever-present help in your time of trouble? Then just put your hope in him. Just put your faith in him. Whenever you feel yourself overwhelmed, when you feel yourself drowning in the middle of your crisis, when you feel yourself that the earth is shaking around you, when you feel that your mountains are being crushed around you, when you feel the earth quake around you, oh, be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. Be still. Know that whatever you're going through, God is God. And he created heaven and earth. He created everything. See, when man makes anything, we know how to fix it. Take any invention of man, a car. Let any car of the part, any part of the car, break up or cause any problems. You will see that man is able to fix it, repair it, take that part out, put a new one in there, and fix it. Oh, what machine is it? There is nothing man has made that man cannot fix. So if man, who are made in the image and likeness of God, and God has given us the creativity and the ability to do things and to change things and to cause things to change, if we can do that for the things we have created, then you 
you, I want you to know that if God created you, that he can do the same thing in your life. He can change the circumstances. He can change the situation. He can heal you or whatever it is. He can replace your kidney even if it is bad. He can give you a new kidney. He can give you that healing touch. He can fix that marriage. He can fix that job. He can fix that situation you are in. He can fix your financial situation. All he is asking you to do is to be still and know that he is God. May the Lord bless each and every one of us as we stand still and know that he is God. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen.